covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. If you enjoy your weekly tech news with a slight Linux bias, become part of our fleet. Choose your rank at patreon.com slash category 5. Let's get into it. Microsoft has fixed a bizarre Windows 10 error. That's coming up. But first, while a Mario theme Switch has been announced, we all hope for the release of a new 4K Nintendo Switch Pro this year. Mario theme news keeps flowing out of Nintendo as they continue celebrating the 35th anniversary of Super Mario Bros, which took place in September. We've seen the revisited Nintendo Game & Watch, and now Nintendo has announced the new game, Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury, which they promise is a bigger and badder version of the game originally released for the Wii U. But our focus this week is on something a little different, and a whole lot bigger. We talked about it way back on episode 604 in April 2019, but now it's ready. The first ever Super Nintendo World theme park is opening at Universal Studios Japan on February 4th of this year. A newly released sneak peek video tour by Shigeru Miyamoto, creator of Mario, Donkey Kong, and The Legend of Zelda, walks you right into the atrium of Princess Peach's castle through a portal-like shimmering green pipe. From there, Miyamoto shows you how to use decorated smart wristbands to collect coins all throughout a colorful, life-size version of the legendary world. Just as in the classic Super Mario Bros game, punching up on each question mark block encountered along the way will release the coin straight into your wristband, replete with a satisfying coin-collecting ding. This wearable wristband technology is linked to your smartphone and unlocks the interactive gameplay experience of the park. Combined with the augmented reality experience of themed rides, this promises to be a magical experience for visitors of all ages. One such adventure, Bowser's Castle, is sure to delight with its heavy stone walls, looming staircases, burning wall sconces, dungeon-like doors, and an enormous statue of Bowser in its depths, which, as rumor has it, just might be animated. Here you'll find the entrance doors to an augmented reality Mario Kart ride called Koopa's Challenge, where participants will be able to toss shells and steer about the Mushroom Kingdom. Thomas Garatti, Senior Director Innovation and Global Executive Producer for Mario Kart explains, guests will put on their headset, which takes them through the Mario Kart universe, to experience never-ending excitement and thrills. Chock full of the iconic landscapes, pipes, castles, and the beloved creatures and characters of the Super Mario world, this $580 million project is part of an effort by the Kyoto-based games company to increase falling revenue by expanding its franchises. The park was initially scheduled to open back before the 2020 Summer Olympics in, to in Tokyo, but both were delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. While they are doing augmented reality, what I found really intriguing about this video is that it appears like the park is all physical recreations of the gameplay. Which is totally awesome. And it, I was expecting a Nintendo theme park to be like filled with screens and, you know, Nintendo gameplay and everything else. But it's literally taken the, uh, like the Mario theme and turned it into a real life park that you can walk through to the point where one of my favorite parts that were shown in this, in this preview was that um, at one point, you shrink, like Mario shrinks. Doom, yeah. Doom, doom. yeah, yeah. Because the the all the surroundings become huge. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They yeah, triple in size, and it's like, oh my goodness, the effect is so cool. It's like you want to bring cool. your smartphone and start taking some pictures. Now I wonder if there'll be some sort of like, you know, hey, you can't film this. For a I while. don't know. I but, doubt it. No, something like this. It's meant for kids. Well, it's that's meant. For, no, it's meant for you 80s kids. That's what it's meant for. That's it's meant for true, 80s kids. but it's super American. It's meant for 80s kids, boomers will say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to take their zoomers uh, right. with them and uh, and and show them what you know. It, it's pretty magical. I, I mean, I'm not a huge theme park person. I mean, like I remember going to Disney as a kid, and yeah, Universal, yeah. and all that. And I was like, okay, it's just another place for attractions and rides. Whatever. Sure. But this is probably the first theme-based park that's legit theme-based Yeah, um, that I would probably go to. Mm -hmm. And I, simply because it is Mario. And, and the idea behind it is mind-blowing. Like, so the fun. fact that you could it's take so the video fun. game 
and turn it into a place and and then they hit those elements yeah it's so cool and and i like that they've got um that interactive component like yeah with oh, the yeah. hitting the coins and and all that kind of stuff because it's not just about going and 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 experiencing it it's about experiencing it which takes it to another level we went to lego world years ago yeah and and that was fun you can go onto our website and do a search for for lego and category 5.tv if you want to see it uh but we took our kids there and it was mm -hmm. a lot of fun and it, it kind of reminded me of that where you're you're walking into a world that is yes. just lego that's right. And you're walking into a world that is just, you are basically transported into these video games that you and I grew up with. Yeah. And it's so magical. Now, what I can't wait to find out is who's the first person that's going to slip on a banana peel? Ha, ha, ha. And do they get away with saying, oh, it's part of the experience. Don't sue us. <laughs> the interesting thing about opening a theme park at the beginning of 2021, of course, yeah. uh, you know, like uh, Japan... You know, last last I saw, we're like uh, Friday. W they were at about eight thousand cases. Yeah. And and so, you know, are, are, how are they going to do this? Uh, two years ago, when they first announced this yeah. theme park, there there was no pandemic in sight. Right. But so, I mean, at this point, the capital's been put in to build it. Obviously, and maybe that's it. Like it's ready. Yeah. And when everything is behind us, and then okay, we can all go. But w will people go regardless? Probably not, uh, like, not travelers, but locals. Well, I mean, we I just... I sure would. We it, just got stats... As long that, as there's social distancing and safety measures sure. put into place, which there will be. But look at the Christmas holidays here in Canada. Mm -hmm. Stats just came out that from, was it Canada or Ontario alone, 4,000 people went to Hawaii over the Christmas holidays. Okay. And that's in the midst of a global pandemic. So I can imagine... People so are people going will. To go. People are going to go. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, so stay safe. I'm I'm absolutely certain that uh, Nintendo will um, ha and Universal Studios in general will have um, safety precautions in place oh, for sure. and, and be following the rules and everything else. But uh, something definitely to look forward to taking the kids to uh, when things are a little bit safer, for sure. Absolutely. All right, Becca. Future plans include the opening of Super Nintendo World Parks at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida, Hollywood, California, and Singapore. Microsoft has fixed Windows 10's 60-second self-destruct. After upgrading to Windows 10 20H2 with the October 2020 update, some Windows 10 users experienced a bizarre Windows 10 error. Without warning, a prompt would appear on their screen to alert them that they had only 60 seconds to save their work before their system would automatically shut down and restart. There was no option to cancel or dismiss the restart, and if a user happened to have stepped away from their computer at the time of the alert, they risked losing important unsaved data by not being quick enough to do anything about it. Microsoft confirmed this back in November, explaining that some Windows 10 updates caused critical issues for certain configurations with the local security authority subsystem service. This was reportedly a filing conflict in the system triggered by changing your local username, especially the main admin account name. If your particular device was affected, this mysterious prompt might have appeared and rebooted your system. These type of issues cropping up following a Windows update can be very frustrating. Have you ever had a Windows update cause you to lose data or functionality? Tell us about it in the comments below. Robbie, have you ever encountered such a thing? Oh, Becca, I tell you what. Uh, Jeff, do you remember our Season 10 pilot episode uh, where we oh, shot... Gosh. Four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you'll remember because it's the, it's the episode where we shot the entire thing in 360 VR video. Oh, yes, absolutely. You remember that? Yeah. Um, shooting and producing VR video is very taxing on your computer. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you had a ton of work to do. <laughs> a ton of work. The rendering process of that episode was more than 24 straight hours yes. just to render out a one hour video. I remember that. And Windows 10 rebooted midstream. I forgot about that. It mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not, I don't work full time at the studio. And especially yeah. then it's like you're there once a week and you expect that, okay, everything's going to be ready. And no, it was sitting at the login prompt and I had lost everything. Yeah, because you can't just continue halfway through the render. No, oh no. It doesn't no, you had like to that. start over. 
So needless to say, yes, Becca, I have been through similar situations. Um, and I used to use like things like Notepad. I'd have like notes and everything up on my screen about the show as I was editing and things like that. Um, and then I'd head home for the night. And yeah. I had that lost a few times as oh, well. And, and finally, I realized, okay, this is not, a, uh, this is not for me. So I save my, <laughs> save my work always. And... Uh, yeah, hopefully never have a render interrupted like that. Oh, man. Wow. Well, at least this mysterious 60-second self-destruct issue was finally resolved on January 7, 2021. The fix was pushed out automatically, so you don't need to do anything as long as your Windows 10 device gets its Windows updates. However, if you are working with custom media or have updates paused, make sure you update your OS. 60 seconds. That's not enough time. I mean, I would be furious thankfully <laughs> thankfully my system did not have this issue yeah but for a while probably a year my system wouldn't even do updates oh really it would try and do it and then it would crash every time oh wow and then like a month and a half ago it started working so i didn't have to go through this the worst thing is when that update comes up on the screen and you can't get out of it it's yeah. like full screen and it blocks everything so you're in the you might be in the middle of something and suddenly yeah you're locked out now this is a case once again where Microsoft has updated Windows 10 and introduced a problem that previously didn't exist. Yeah. And that, I mean, I don't have to say that bugs me. I think that that bugs all of us, that uh, that, that kind that of thing still words? happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we've, uh, you know, we've been through this. It seems uh, yes. like it's a recurring theme that Microsoft keeps doing this, where they're breaking systems. And At least they're consistent. You know what you're getting. <laughs> Bugs. <laughs> you know what you're getting. <laughs> this is where that slight Linux bias comes in and we say, hey, check out Linux Mint. That's check right. out Ubuntu. Check out Ubuntu Mate. Yeah. What else can we say? Debian. Definitely yeah. Debian. Just about anything. <laughs> Just not CentOS. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I don't know why this stuff doesn't get caught first by Windows. Uh, like I, I, I got to hand it to them. I mean, as software developing, uh, as software developers, it's it's virtually impossible to think of every sure. every case, Absolutely. every scenario. Um, sometimes it has to do with the particular graphics drivers you have, and yeah. like they just can't test everything. But <sighs> you know, in IT, um, one of the one of the practices that we have is okay. We're going to make a big change to the network. We have 1,200 computers. We're going to push this out to five isolated systems first. We're going to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And then we wait it out and we see how everything goes. Right. Great. Okay. A, a couple of days have, have passed. Let's push that out to 30 systems. Mm -hmm. And let's see if any complaints or problems come in. And as we work through those things, then we feel confident and we can push it out to the 1,200 systems. Right. But you've got Windows is on probably billions of computers. Right. So why do they not have a test group? Well, why don't they run their update on... All of their systems. 1% <laughs> of sure. Windows 10 systems. Yeah. Let's release this update to 1%. Yeah. Let's see what happens. But could you imagine? <laughs> I'd hate to be the 1%. Yeah. But, but at least then they could fix it before pushing it out to billions of people. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure this kind of stuff... <laughs> I can exaggerate. It's you know, okay. like, it, it was isolated cases. I mean, I say that sure. loosely. Yeah. It wasn't every system. Yeah. But imagine if, like, a, a government defense computer was running Windows, and they were middle of something important. It's like, <laughs> you've got 60 seconds. It's like, yeah. what? Uh-huh. Like... Uh, Enter the disarm codes now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you have 120 seconds to disarm. Yeah. You have 60 seconds before I reboot. Oh, oh man. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's unfortunate. But at least they got it fixed quickly. I, I will give you know, Microsoft that as they mm -hmm. fixed it quick so hopefully, compared to some other, other issues. Hopefully you didn't lose anything. Yeah. Don't miss the other stories we're following this week. First, Mozilla's privacy VPN service is now available on macOS and Linux. Plus, Intel's newly announced 12th Gen chip hybrid is set to compete with both ARM and Apple Silicon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you catch the full stories. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Thanks for watching. 